Hello, Thomas. Hi, Phil. Great to meet you. How's it going? Very well. It's such a great honor to get to finally meet you. I feel like so much of our engagements have been virtually through R and Pharma, and uh, I feel like I know you, but I haven't actually got to meet you. So yeah, this is nice. So it's good to finally sit down for sure. You have such a fascinating background of coming into the pharmaceutical drug development space and working with legacy software and moving into open source and creating Admiral, one of the most important packages of, of the entire late stage clinical trials process and doing such an important part of, of working with data, which is critical. Um, it'd be great to learn more about what was that journey like for you to get there? Yeah, in many ways it started by accident. Um, I never thought I would for starters work in farmer and definitely not become a programmer. And so I ventured into sports science because I was in love with sports all my life and that was really what I was passionate about and then got a job in my I think fourth semester of my undergraduate uh, working at a research lab in uh, the University Hospital in Berlin where I'm from and there we um, had a PhD student who had written R code um, he was quite proficient at that um, and I collected some data with a certain measurement device which would produce an XML output which as you might imagine is not easily analyzable so he wrote a script to basically turn it into a nice tidy data frame um, and I was supposed to run that, so he gave it to me and said, install R in our studio and then click the source button, sort of. And yeah, uh, way over my head. Um, didn't work for starters, um, so I had to kind of dig down a bit and make this work. And at some point when I managed to run the script, see the output, I thought like, okay, this is pretty powerful. So this became a huge passion. And yeah, later on when I decided to um, joined the pharmaceutical industry basically. I looked for an intersection between working on clinical trials and programming and then I found the role of statistical programmer. It, it's such a, an amazing journey and it speaks to so many of the people in the pharmaceutical industry as they're transitioning to open source. And I think what's also really exciting about what you did is you came to R for a use case at work and fast forward, only a few years, you create a, a very popular package um, for creating graphics. Obviously, with open source, what you really want to do is create something which others can also use. Because when you face a, sim uh, a problem, most likely someone else faces the same issue, or even, let's say, similar. So it makes sense to say, I created this, um, it's probably useful for someone else, so let's make it open source. And that's what I did with this package called GG Charts, which kind of tried to make it easier to create certain plots, um, which tended to be code heavy with ggplot too, um, and make it basically a function call to create, for example, like a sort of a bar chart, which I thought was should be something very simple, but turned out to be quite an exercise actually to do. So <laughs> you take and create a package, yeah. and what's to me, such an awesome thing is that you were taking dplyr workflows and piping of data into ggplot2, and you said to yourself, gosh, I can simplify even this, which was a very much a simplification of various workflows. Um, tell us about the motivation to simplify the interface into programming and helping people do such core things as graphics. Yeah, really what you, when you develop software, what you want to do is create as easy as possible of an interface while providing as much power in a way as possible. So you can create very powerful tools which are hard to use and no one will ever use them. So instead what you should opt for is simplicity and that people can adopt it and that they are empowered then to, to readily adopt it. So that was kind of what I was aiming for, make something that looked kind of hard with the existing tools and tried to streamline it and make it very easy. So if you want to create a certain type of graph, you just have a single function call with a couple of meaningfully named arguments and then off you go. And then on to Crayon. Was that, right. a, was that a big day for you? For sure, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was a big day and um, I'm pretty sure I did a post and celebrated it. So yeah. It oh, good. absolutely. And so take that into the work that you have done on Admiral, is there lessons learned from that package and the simplicity around the interface and creating graphics that you create around this interfacing for Atom data sets? I mean, yeah, I think certainly the aspect of trying to keep it as simple as possible 
for the user. Yeah. That's a big one, which we had with kind of developing Admiral for Atom datasets. Yeah. Because the existing solution we had, um, which was not in R, which was in proprietary language, in many ways um, could be hard to use for people. So yeah. as long as oh, totally. we were you know, in the realm of standard data sets and it just worked, it's good. But then if something fails or you need to customize, it's a black box and people struggle with it. Yeah. So yeah. we wanted to have something that is extremely simple to use where people just um, have to read the documentation once and then are sure, okay, if I need to do this, I use this function. If I need to do yeah. this, I use the other function. Yeah, so simplicity was really, really key. One area that's so interesting is this idea of Admiral being extended by other groups and people and pharmaceutical companies into different areas of pharma and life sciences, mm -hmm. right? Vaccines, oncology. Uh, what makes it about this use case that extends it well into these other areas of Atom data creation? Um, why not just use Admiral or why not just use Dplyr? Well, I think certainly you could use dplyr and that's certainly what we do it's the basis of what we use we kind of say the tidy versus great let's yeah. you know take that as our basis and build on top of it um, but it obviously streamlines a lot as you said because there's common algorithms you do in these kind of derivations that are specific to this domain so you can take all these dplyr functions put them together and do that thing but it's much easier if we give you a single function to do that and the idea of Admiral is we built like the core layer, all the stuff that anyone would need for kind of general purpose, let's call it, um, analysis data sets in pharma for clinical trials. But then there's the, all these intricacies of whether you're working in oncology or on vaccine development or any other therapeutic area. And I don't have the expertise for that. But if there's a certain company which is heavily investing in kind of research and development on that kind of front, they are the experts. So it makes sense that they say, you know, what you've built is good, we'll take that as sort of the next basis of the pyramid, so to speak, and build again on, on top of it. And that worked out well so far with these three extensions, and I really hope that this kind of ecosystem flourishes and gets larger and larger. Do you think that there will be more unification or standardization of other areas of the late stage clinical work? I would certainly hope so, because at the end of the day, we all do the same work. So there is this submission package if you want to file for your new drug to the FDA, for example, and for all of us, whether you're working at a Roche, a GSK, a Pfizer, at the end of the day, it's the same. So why make it kind of different, use different tools, and spend the effort of, you know, within each company to build such a tool? That's kind of what we did yeah. the last 20 years. And now there's this nice shift to say, we'll adopt open source, and we'll also, as I said, embrace the mindset. And then, you know, we can just bundle the resources and say, we all face the common problem. Let's get together and solve it together in a way that we all can actually use it. Um, and that way, Ampidrome benefits. Not only do you have this fantastic team, but you also have a great focus on building out the infrastructure and tooling. And um, Kieran mm -hmm. was talking about in the webinar that Shiny was the spark that helped focus on the creation of Teal. And you have other frameworks like Ocean. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that and that, that view of creating tooling internally to help with the creation of content and process. Right, so you mentioned Teal and that's kind of an interesting case because you know, when you say, we'll stop doing way, uh, things the way we did for 20 years, we kind of do it different now. Everyone says like, why should we? It works, right? Um, but when you show people something like Shiny, which is something that we didn't have previously as like a solution, then people somehow get excited. They see like this adds value. And so in many ways, that was like the initial foot in the door and then once that got adopted readily, you know, we went on to say, okay, what are other things where we could leverage R and open source? And then, you know, Admiral, Oak, these other things got developed. But um, all these tools are quote unquote useless unless you have sort of a platform that all packages together. And, you know, pharma being a fairly regulated environment, you need to make sure that, you know, the analysis you do are done in kind of a kind of what we call validated environment, basically. You need to make sure that the software you use is reasonably reliable for what you do. And, you know, to be fair, um, that makes sense because imagine you do an error on your analysis to get a drug approved, which then turns out to not be beneficial, but potentially even harmful. So you got to make sure that everything kind of works and you need that kind of base layer, um, the computing environment in which you can do that. And so that's the work that has been done with Ocean, um, led by Ian Healy within Roche, which is a huge undertaking to basically say, 
um, build a novel environment to really embrace all this open source. And it's not only about R, there's Python in there, there can be Julia in there. It's kind of really based on all these great open source things, like for example, Docker containerization. So really taking all this cutting edge development and making sure that we can use that within a kind of our drug development space. In other interviews and in the community, you're a big advocate of using the RStudio IDE. And uh, tell people about the RStudio products as part of those environments at Roche. Sure, so if you spin up basically an R container in this ocean environment, you have basically an RStudio uh, Server Pro instance ready for you. And um, I can still remember going back to that initial R script I got, I downloaded R, open the kind of R GUI that comes with it. Yeah, that wasn't too exciting. Um, then getting to something like RStudio, which really, you know, um, so much streamlines your work and you get all these nice tools and your development just becomes more efficient. You can actually focus um, on kind of the hard things to design and stuff um, and have all these little bits and pieces that help you along the way. And looking back at your career, just a couple of years ago, you listed Shiny and, and projects that you'd worked in Shiny. Um, what is it like to, publish Shiny applications internally at Roche to Posit Connect, and, and are there other types of content there, like APIs and things that, that you use in the clinical process? Yeah, so when we develop these Teal applications internally, we obviously want to make sure that our stakeholders who want to use them have readily access to that, and um, kind of, you know, data scientists are not kind of DevOps people or IT people. They don't know how to pull up a server. I certainly don't, and I'm sure that um, many don't even want to bother about that. They want to build the app and then they want to click a button and say, okay, now it's available to these group of people. And it's kind of great to have like a product as kind of Posit Connect, which, yeah, streamlines this for you and then it works. And you can concentrate on kind of your uh, expertise, which is to make sure that the actual application that is built is fit for purpose for your clinician, for your safety scientist, whoever wants to use it in the end. One of the key things right now that the industry is focused on, and I feel like other pharmaceutical companies are looking mm. at Roche, is the buzz around next year and, and the upcoming years of doing submissions fully in R. And there's been some pilot work done around that, um, but I believe Roche has been the key organization that says we're going after that. What's that been like internally as you prepare for that? Obviously a huge challenge because we made the decision to say every new study starting this year, 2023, should go on our new platform with Ocean and use all these next-gen tools like Admiral, Oak, Teal, and et cetera, to deliver their studies. And, you know, we cannot uh, influence whether or not a study reads out positively in the end, but if it does, that basically means it's time for that submission, which uses R and open source as its backbone, um, and will get submitted to a health authority. And actually, there's uh, one phase three trial we have in oncology, which is already on our platform since last year. They were kind of early adopters, got gotten ready to be able to do this, and they are planned to read out their study by the end of this year. So even potentially, you know, December, November of this year, 2023. So there could be a kind of first clinical trial submission using all these tools in R um, to the FDA, and which is huge. And obviously, that puts a lot of pressure not only on the people working on that particular study, because everyone is looking at them, but also people like me building tools because they feel the pressure of if our tools don't are not up for the job, then they will fail in a way. Um, and everyone within the organization is, I would say, laser focused on making sure that we achieve this goal. Um, and it's really interesting to see I mean, there's so many great developers uh, within Roche and all converging on this kind of one goal and trying to make it work. It's very interesting because if you look at new drug applications on the FDA side, open source in R has been used for quite some time. I think I've even found submissions as far back as 2007 where R has been used and people and even organizations are starting to use Python in some of these submissions. And so there is this interest of interoperability and and moving to a world where open source languages can work together. And you see an area like PKPD, where there's a lot of tooling used there for modeling and simulations and nonlinear mixed effects models and things like that. Um, how much of the future do you see Teal and these frameworks that you have evolving to include other language as part of these submissions? 
It's an interesting question, and I think it's hard to say, really. But the way we, for example, build this ocean platform is to say, let's make it language agnostic. In a way, let's not repeat the quote-unquote error we had 20 years ago to lock in into a single tool stack, but build something that is extensible, such that if in the future, for example, Ju Julia is very interesting for PK you mentioned, um, if people want to use that, they should be able to. We should uh, em empower them in a way to use whatever tool they feel is best for the job. And I think that's, that's kind of a critical shift in mindset to say, we have a tool and we need to make it work for use case X, but instead say, we have use case X, which of all these tools out there is the best for the job? And then enabling people to say, this is the best one, let's take it and let's bring it into production, so to speak. There seems to be such an obsession in our industry, and rightfully so, around validation, or should I say qualification and reproducibility, right? Do you see this being built out further into different infrastructures, tooling, technology? What, was, what, what do you think the next two to three years of that space will be? So I hope that within three to five years, what you mentioned, again, we have a convergence on that. And I think that's already starting to happen because there is this R validation hub, which is, again, lots of pharma companies coming together and trying to tackle that problem together. And there are thoughts around having a CRAN-like repository for quote-unquote validated packages for clinical trial data. Um, so people are very much aware that this is a problem we really only get to tackle efficiently if we again work together because if we have again a validation approach in, at Roche, at GSK, at j and that's probably not the best approach. Um, so I really hope that again, just as we had on the code development side, we can come together and, and make something work out there. Um, but it certainly seems to be um, going into that direction, which is good to see. Talk about going in new directions. Do you think there will ever be a Python package in the Pharmaverse or some other? That's an interesting question. Um, I wouldn't um, say no, because you never know what the future brings. Um, I think now that we have shown that one particular open source language is viable, why shouldn't another uh, not be viable as well? That being said, I think there's a reason why R is particularly interesting for the pharmaceutical space, because if you think about it, the kinds of analyses that we do in terms of a primary endpoint of a study, that's really the kind of classical biostatistics uh, often also frequentist kind of way of analyzing data. And really, um, R is built just for that. It's a language for statistical computing. And while Python may offer that to some extent as well, it's really another beast. It's a general purpose language. Um, that being said, it certainly has attracted a lot of data scientists, particularly in the kind of ML and AI um, space. And that is also coming to pharma as well. But it's not the kind of bread and butter work of showing with a clinical trial that this particular drug actually works. It's more like on the periphery, I would say. So there are use cases for sure. Um, would someone say port Admiral to Python? Maybe, but I'm, I'm not sure it's worth the effort to say that. Thomas, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this. I've, uh, the fact that we're actually able to hang out and chat is much better than uh, engaging in emails or virtually through R and Pharma. It was a pleasure, well, thank you so much. Thanks, Thomas. Thomas.